Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Coming Soon, which is what I'll call this until I have a better name for this. So I just received a package in the mail, literally just went out from the mailbox and found a new package from my close personal friends at MVD. And uh, I love it, they, they send these to me, uh, UPS, and I don't know if you can read this, but they are marked extremely urgent. The first time I got one of these and I opened it up, what was in there were titles that probably no one would consider extremely urgent. But uh, it always makes me laugh because it says extremely urgent. It's like an official documentation. And I open it up and it's like calamity of snakes. So pardon the noise, but you are finding out with me semi-live exactly what I just got sent. I don't, uh, I don't know what's in this box, so we're just going to pull them out randomly and uh, delve into these releases that are uh, uh, coming soon. So first up we have, ooh. So this is from Dark Force Entertainment. This is Moonlighting Wives. I've never actually bought anything from Dark Force Entertainment, but I've followed them online for a really long time. And they put out like this super deep dish, drive-ins type of stuff that I love. I'm a, I'm a drive-in kind of guy. I, I help run a drive-in. So. so we have Moonlighting Wives, beautiful young Moonlighting Wives rock in Shaka City with unprintable scandal. This sounds, uh, Moonlighting Wives is not, we repeat, is not for shy or prudish people. So, uh, oh, it's a Joe Sarno film. I'd see, I know vaguely of Joe Sarno. There was a really good Joe Sarno documentary. I've seen a couple of his movies, but I'm still relatively ignorant to the Joe Sarno world. So let me read to you uh, from the back of the box. From Joe Sarno, the master of brooding eroticism comes Moonlighting Wives, a torrid true crime drama ripped from the headlines of unassuming suburbia, starring the beautiful Tammy Latour, probably not a real name, and Gretchen Rudolph, guessing that isn't either, along with his exploitation queen June Roberts and future character actor uh, Joe Santos in one of his earliest roles. Dark Force Entertainment presents Moonlighting Wives, restored from its completely uncensored 35 millimeter original negative, featuring five minutes of long lost additional nudity and sex. Excuse me, I get choked up when I talk about nudity and sex. Deemed too scandalous for its original release. So, uh, special features new 2K transfer from the original 35 millimeter camera negative with the five minutes, aforementioned five minutes of not lost nude scenes. Historian audio commentary by Joe Sarno biographer Michael Bowen. On camera interview, Michael Bowen discusses Joe Sarno's life and a deleted nude scene. This is presented 133, so that's four by three or squarish academy ratio, as we call it, and it is region ABC. So as I often say, if you're listening to the sound of my voice anywhere in the world, uh, this will this will play on your player. So uh, it is an English mono, and it, this is, uh, is it 86 or is it 68? Well, it's either 86 or 68 minutes. So I will uh, uh, crack this open. I'll break the seal on this for you and see what we have. So uh, yeah, Dark Force is uh, a company I'm going to start getting titles to review from. I've long wanted to see their stuff, but uh, I just haven't got around to buying it for myself. And a lot of times their stuff is not in print for very long. The, the Dark Force Entertainment Superstore online is sort of like it's online and it's offline and it's hard for me to follow. So uh, what we have here is a clear case with a facsimile, I think, of the original poster. And we crack it open and uh, nothing fancy. You just got a disc in there, but uh, that's uh, that's... It's very exciting for me. Moonlighting Wives. As always, if you look at the notes under this video here on the YouTube, I will put the uh, Amazon ordering links and the street dates on that. Uh, a lot of times Amazon will have, uh, for pre-orders, they'll have like 33% off or something like that. So it's uh, usually a pretty good deal. But all the info is down there that I don't currently have because I don't know what any of this stuff is coming out. I just know that it's not out yet. So up next, we have Daniel Sadak Presents Redline. This looks like a uh, f uh, fast and or furious car racing drama. I don't really, I think I've heard of this. Fear nothing, risk everything. With uh, Tim Matheson and Eddie Griffin are the two names I've heard of in this. On the streets of Los Angeles and Las Vegas, daredevil drivers race the world's most exotic cards for million dollar bets. But the, as the stakes rise, so does the danger. <laughs> Sorry, I just love doing this voice when I read anything. From deadly crashes to kidnapping and murder, only, only, the, only the fast and furious survive. Good one. With adrenaline pumping action and some of the rarest, most expensive high-performance vehicles ever raced and obliterated on film, Redline roars into high gear and doesn't let off the gas until the explosive final explosive rush. I love car movies. I actually don't love the Fast and the Furious movies. I, to me, they're just, they're a whole lot of attitude and they're generally poorly shot. They may be doing actual stunts in those movies, but the few that I have watched have been so much CGI and cartoon cars and special effects and overcutting and badly presented. I'm just like, 
I can't see what's going on. And they're, and they're pretty ridiculous. I do respect, though, that the Fast and the Furious movies have ch evolved over time and, and gotten progressively ridiculous, but we're not talking about Fast and the Furious movies. So this is an MVD marquee collection. So this is from MVD, who gives me a lot of stuff. And this is also all region, PG-13. It is, what year is this from? 2007. So, wow, if you do the math, 2007 was not a short time ago. Uh, we have special features under the hood, the making of Redline featurette. It's 11 minutes. We've got Redline at the LA Auto Show featurette. That's three minutes. And original trailer, it's two and a half minutes. And uh, yeah, so we've got, we've got Redline on Blu-ray with uh, just, you know, just a disc and art, which is totally legit. Up next, what will it, what will it be? Ooh. Sorry, it, you're, you're getting my actual uh, legit reactions to these. So also from Dark Force Entertainment, they do a drive-in series that I've long been curious about. We have a double feature of Bog, which is British for where you go to the bathroom, and Mako the Jaws of Death, which is a really fun movie from uh, William Griffay, which was not included in the Arrow uh, William Griffay collection, which is an excellent collection if you don't have it. Um, at the time, people were asking Griffay, why aren't certain titles in this set? Are they gonna do a second set? And he said, well, certain ones have been licensed to other people already. So I know Grindhouse is putting out Impulse, which I've never seen and I'm looking forward to with William Shatner and Harold Oddjob Sakata and Mako Jaws of Death with Richard Jekyll, which is basically about a guy who like has pet sharks or is really friendly with sharks and some nefarious people murder them. So then he starts using sharks as revenge. So it's a revenge movie where instead of like a gun or explosive, the guy seeks his revenge on people with sharks. It's, it's a good flick. And Bog I've heard of with Gloria DeHaven and Aldo Ray, but I've never, I've never seen it. So I like that they use like the old ad mats. They make it look like an old drive-in ad and a double dose of shock. So this is number 14 in that series. And uh, the box office opens at seven o'clock, but it's down dawn of the Dark Force retro drive-in series with the biggest release of them all, featuring the co-hit and incredible 1976 sharp epic Mako the Jaws of Death. Dark Force is thrilled to present a brand new 2K scan from the original uncut 35 millimeter camera negative. Ooh, so this is gonna look great. The only copies of this that I've seen have not looked very good. And our main feature is the long lost 1979 drive-in monster classic Bog for the first time in high def and guaranteed to please those B-movie lovers. The show starts at dusk, so grab an ice cold refreshment and some popcorn and enjoy. I love this stuff. Image Entertainment used to do drive-in discs where they would take two features and they would put old trailers and intermission reels and all. You could even, they had an option on the audio where you could listen to it in like drive-in mode where you could hear the sounds of crickets chirping and it, it, the sound became a little bit tinnier like it was coming from a speaker, drive-in speaker, and you could hear the sounds of like people walking on gravel. It was it was kind of neat. So special features, Mako the Jaws of Death uh, blah, 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 with color correction and a brand new 4 2K transfer, Bog 2K transfer from the only known surviving film element in a bog uh, press gallery, and then there's Demon Drive-In Mode. I've never watched one of these, so I don't know really what that is, but uh, that's exciting. As I said, as I unwrap this, I'll put in a plug. Uh, if you're unaware, I'm a general manager at the Mahoning Drive-In Theater in Lehigh, Pennsylvania. We are all retro, all 35 millimeter, and we do a lot of stuff like this. We work with Exhumed Films out of Philadelphia, and we put on, or Exhumed Selects, and we, we present, we host, amazing shows. We do Zombie Fest every year, which is like three days of triple features. We do Camp Blood every year, which is three days of triple features. We're doing Godzilla Palooza, which is four days, I think, of classic Godzilla movies, all on 35 millimeter, all with vintage, period accurate trailers. I'm not selling it because I work there. I'm selling it because I love it. I started going as a patron because I, and I would drive five and a half hours. This is a documentary called At the Drive-In from uh, 2017 that tells the story of how the Mahoning became what it is now. I'm in it, I'm not selling it on you, but it's, it's, a, it's a fun documentary. And uh, I used to just go because I loved old movies and now I work there and this is the kind of stuff that got me to drive that really, that the distance. So we get the old style art on the disc and uh, nothing fancy on the inside. That'll be watching this one first. Then we have, ooh, we have Yakuza Graveyard from Radiance Films. Radiance Films is a new to us label. I think they've been around in the UK for a little while. And uh, I always will mention this. It's an offshoot. Somebody who used to work at Aero Video started Radiance. And they do pretty high-minded uh, foreign art house, foreign to us and art house releases. They do a really nice job. They don't like load them up with extras like Arrow does. It's usually a decent amount of extras, really nice presentation, and really interesting films that for the most part have been really, really hard to see in this country. So Yakuza Graveyard, let me say what it says here, is a world Blu-ray premiere. Japanese film from 
1976, 97 minutes, color, Japanese uh, with English subtitles, 235 mono, high definition digital transfer, original uncompressed PCM mono audio, appreciation by filmmaker Kazuya Shiryashi, uh, Rage and the Passion, a new visual essay by Tom Mess, who's great, on Miko Kaji. Ooh, Miko Kaji's in this? I know nothing about this. <laughs> and and uh, Kenji Fukusawa's sorry, his collaborations. Gotta always mangle any foreign name here, unfortunately. Original trailer, gallery of promotional imagery, newly translated English subtitles, thank you. Reversible sleeve featuring original and newly commissioned artwork by Time Tomorrow. Limited edition 32 page booklet featuring new writing on the film by Mika Ko on the representation of Koreans in the Yakuza film. And newly translated reprints of a contemporary review and writing by screenwriter Kazuo Kashihara. So this is, once again, Yakuza Graveyard, if you can see that. And what is this film about? It's about 97 minutes. It's uh, when he falls for the beautiful wife of the jailed boss of the Nishida gang, Detective Kuriawa, I'm gonna, again, I apologize in advance, Tetsuya Watari, Graveyard of Honor, finds himself on the wrong side of a Yakuza war when his superiors favored Nishida's rivals, the Yamashiro gang, co-starring iconic Miko Kaji from Lady Snowblood and featuring Nagisa Oshima as the chief of police. Yakuza Graveyard sees director Kinji Fukasaku battles without honor and humanity at the peak of his powers. So yeah, limited edition of 3,000 copies. They do really nice editions if, you, if you're into these movies. So you've got, uh, that's what it looks like when you open it. And if it, if and you take out the disc, you get the uh, original poster, which I greatly appreciate. And then we have a, a not thin booklet here with uh, writing on the film and a lot of pictures. Wow, I'll just, I'll give you the flip. I'll give you, I'll, I'll flip you, I'll flip you for it. So uh, yeah, this is, this is a really nice edition. I, uh, I, go, I come and go with the, the Japanese Yakuza movies. Sometimes they all kind of feel relatively similar, but if they're from this era of the 60s and 70s, they have a lot of the trappings of that era that I like, the funky music and the cool cinematography and, and all that. So, uh, and then we have one more here. Ah, very interesting as well. This, uh, it's the reading for you from the original uh, copy here. Handmade Babies, was it the hand of God or the hand of the devil? Kate O'Mara, Paul Freeman, and Edward Judd in Whose Child Am I? This, at least they did, at least they knew the butler didn't do it. He was found, he was the first body they found. Anna Moffo, Peter Baldwin, and Eveline Stewart in Weekend Murders. I think, yes, this is another Dark Force disc. Another Dark Force uh, drive-in double feature. Uh, I, much respect for companies like Dark Force who release things that are just really obscure. Like, you, you wonder, I know Code Red, Dark Force and Code Red were interconnected to a degree, and Code Red would often, uh, Will Olson or Walt Olson, can never remember which, um, Mr. Olson, who was the, uh, the person who ran Code Red, would often complain that people weren't buying and his titles weren't selling, and I was always like, well, even, you know, serious cult movie fans haven't heard of a lot of these titles, but a lot of us greatly appreciate the fact that he put this stuff out because the titles nobody else would touch. So yes, this is another one of the drive-in discs from uh, from Dark Force. And they even have, I don't know if you can see it there, they even have an original logo from some, some drive-in somewhere in the US. I, I greatly appreciate that. This is number 18. Welcome to Dark Force Retro Drive-In Movie Series. Tonight we feed, have two horror films rated R. The box office opens at seven o'clock and the show starts at dusk with the newly improved and remastered Weekend Murders. A family goes to a British estate to hear the reading of a will and then get murdered one by one. Sounds like fun. This is followed by our main feature, Whose Child Am I from 1976. This long lost drive in exploitation flick asks the question of handmade babies, was it the hand of God or the hand of the devil? Don't forget to visit our snack bar, for enjoy some refreshments, enjoy the show. So the special features are a new HD master from the original US CRI with extensive restoration and color correction in, in scope for Weekend Murders. Whose Child Am I is a brand new 2K master from the only known 35 millimeter drive-in print with color correction, which probably means it's just got some, some spicks and dings in it. I mean, I specs and dings in it. And Dark Force drive-in mode featuring four drive-in trailers. This is 235 and 185. Once again, it is all region. And uh, Weekend Murders is 98 minutes. Whose Child Am I, 91 minutes. They knew how to make, they knew the right length of movies back then. Didn't have to be two and a half hours for everything. 90 minutes, you're in, you're out, you're, you're good. And uh, it is in English mono. So inside again, nothing too fancy. 
but uh, this this looks fun. I love seeing new to me movies, movies that came out in the, in the drive-in era, in the era, you know, I, I'm born in the early 70s and I have an affinity for that period of time trying to, you know, see everything I couldn't see as an adult when I was a tiny little kid. So uh, anytime there's like new movies from that era, I always uh, I always get excited. So that's all I have this week and or until they, another package shows up and I'll, I'll do one of these again. As always, look down below in the notes for the uh, Amazon buying links and links, those same links will get you to the full specs of these if I didn't cover them. And in there, I will have the uh, release dates, the street dates. Probably they're all up for pre-order now. So until next time, I am Mark and I will see you right here.